What's up, everybody? Welcome to Political Fight Club. I'm your host, Robert Durden, and this episode is actually going to be giving a little bit of credit to the squad. Now, I'm going to talk about whether or not I think the squad is regaining its mojo, or whether or not I think this is kind of a fluke and that nothing will actually come of it, but we have an opportunity here. Uh, and I'm going to read to you what AOC and Rashida Tlaib have done over the last 24 hours. And if you, unless you've been living under a rock, basically you know what Rashida Tlaib did uh, when Biden went to that Dearborn factory and started driving the F-150s in that factory. So let's, let's start with that. And then I'm going to lay it all out and come full circle and tell you what I think they should do and what I think they will do. So Rashida Tlaib uh, actually physically confronted Joe Biden on the tarmac when he landed and was about to go to this F-150 factory in Dearborn where they are, you know, just coming out with these new electric F-150s. And it was a PR stunt, and that's why he was there. And he gave a speech afterwards. And I don't know exactly what was said, but it seems pretty clear Rashida Tlaib is a congresswoman who's Palestinian. And Joe Biden just approved a $735 million weapons deal for missiles made by Boeing to go to Israel. And those bombs literally are the ones that are going to be dropped on the Palestinians and cause so much suffering and civilian casualties and infrastructure damage and war crimes. So she stood up to him, and I don't know exactly what she said, um, but I will give props. At least she has the guts to do so. I should add the reason that she's doing this and the reason she doesn't do it on other things is because this affects her personally. So, you know, good for her, I guess, but it's like we could have used this on Medicare for All. You know, it, it, she had to wait till it affected her literally personally because her grandmother lives in Palestine that she was finally able to actually get in Joe Biden's face. But I digress. Good job. A for effort right now. So then what happened uh, earlier today, you guys, is that AOC introduced a resolution in the House to block the arms sale. That is huge, and it's it's co-sponsored um, also by Mark Pocan, um, and I believe Ilhan Omar, and numerous other people of the squad, Cory Bush. So this is good, and basically what happened was is that the arms sale was proposed on May 5th, and the House and the Senate have 15 days, so until May 20th, to block it, or attempt to block it. And then in the House, what happens is, and I'll read to you exactly what happens is here, it goes to a committee where it's likely to die. But, and here's the big but, if a senator also does a resolution to block the arms sale, Bernie, Bernie, then the Senate has to vote on the bill. Leverage. Okay, so I'm going to read to you exactly what happens with AOC's resolution here. Uh, the resolution Ocasio-Cortez will introduce is known as a joint resolution of disapproval. Once introduced, the Speaker of the House, currently Nancy Pelosi, typically refers this type to the House Foreign Affairs Committee, that's what I was talking about, which has jurisdiction over arms sales. In this case, the HVAC members have already exp expressed criticism of the proposed sa sale, including Reps Joaquin Castro, Ilhan Omar, who have come out in opposition to it. Quote, it would be appalling for the Biden administration to go through with the $735 million in precision-guided weaponry to Netanyahu without any strings attached in the wake of escalating violence and attacks on civilians, Omar said in a statement. Quote, if this goes through, this will be seen as a green light for continued escalation and will undercut any attempts at brokering a ceasefire, end quote. So the resolution is likely to die in the House Foreign Affairs Committee, but... The important thing is, is that they put it forward, and now what has to happen is Bernie has to do the same thing in the Senate. That's the big one, guys. That's step one, okay? Bernie has to propose the same resolution and force the Senate to vote on the bill. Because what happens here, guys, is, feel me out, the squad is getting angry, it seems. They finally have woken up, and they're showing signs of life. Two, they have the news cycle. Israel-Palestine is the news cycle right now, and who's to say it will be in two weeks? Right now is the opportunity to get stuff like this done because you have the news cycle. Everything you do that is pro-Palestine right now is going to catch the news cycle. So they have that on their, on their side, to their advantage. So ride the news cycle. They seem to be angry. If Bernie puts that resolution forward, what you will have is a bargaining chip. What you can do is... Either the people in the House or Bernie or all of them, I would say, is they need to go to Biden and people in the Biden administration, but particularly Biden, and be like, listen, here's the deal. 
uh, and they should do this today because they have until tomorrow to put forward the resolution in the Senate. Today, go to Biden and be like, listen, bud, you're either going to take back that $735 million that you just approved and you're going to say we can't give it to people that are committing genocide. Spin it however you want to. We're not going to give it to people that are killing children and you'll look like a hero. Or we're going to put forward the resolution in the Senate. We're going to make them vote on it. And anybody who votes against it and that it also includes the Foreign Affairs Committee, we're going to take down some names and those people's careers are over including people that were that are basically like you centrists because this is a very polarizing issue and people voters have very long memories when it comes to dead children if you don't believe me go look at the fly strewn corpse of andrew yang over here and tell me that this isn't going to be weaponized against you guys next time you go up for election and that includes you joe that includes you every single one of you guys who votes incorrect on this you're done because we are going to shine the world's biggest spotlight on it. We will label you genocide enablers and war criminals. We will refer to you only as thus until you go up for re-election. That includes in debates, that includes in commercials, that includes on social media, that includes in interviews. Everywhere you go, you will never live this down. And all of us are on board. All the squad and Bernie is on board. And if you guys don't like it, then don't give the money to Israel. You can spin it however you want. You can come out a hero on this, or you can come out a villain. And if you become a, a come out a villain, which you have done in the past, I will shine the world's biggest spotlight on you, and you are jolly well fucked when you go for re-election. And everybody who votes against it in the Senate and House Foreign Affairs Committee is also fucked. Because they will be enablers of genocide, and the voters will remember. You go in there, and you give them that spiel, and he's still going to do it, probably. More than likely. But... You put up a tantrum, and then when they do it, follow through, and you smoke them all, and you work together. And I would go, I would go further than this. I mean, if I were in there personally, I'd be like, listen, not only are you not, not going to give this money to Israel, but from now on, you've kind of pissed us off because you you disrespected Rashida Tlaib, didn't listen to her, and in your speech at at the F-150 factory afterwards, in fact, called her Rashid three times tells you exactly it's in one ear out the other when it comes to Palestine with Joe Biden. He would have at least remembered her name if he gave a shit. But you've you've sincerely pissed off everybody and this is getting personal for some of us now. If you don't start doing what we want, we're going to block the family's plan and we're going to block the jobs plan. I, we are now so pissed that we're willing to vote as a block and you will get nothing done because now you seem to be proving to us the squad that you're not really willing to help and you know that you're not really an a plus 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 president like Pramila Jayapal called him last week nice take there Pramila and now we're willing to villainize you in the eyes of the public because it seems so obvious that you don't give a shit about anything that we care about even when it comes to us not wanting genocide in Palestine so I would just say we're gonna block everything this arms sale is not going to go through, and if it does, we're going to make sure that everybody that votes for it is their career's over, or they're going to have a very difficult time when they have to go up for re-election. That includes you, Joe, and I will relentlessly hammer it over the next three years that you are a war criminal if you allow this through. But beyond that, you're also going to start putting things like the PRO Act into the jobs plan. If you don't do that, we're going to block it. We're going to start talking about a $15 minimum wage again. We're going to talk about a public option. If you don't actually start pushing these things and give me your guarantee that you're going to overrule the parliamentarian right here and now, we're, go we're going to war for the next three years, and we'll see who wins because history is going to remember us as the heroes here. This is an easy issue for you to be, for, to be used against you if you're on the wrong side, and you are, and if you want to go to war on it, fine. We'll see who wins when the dust settles. We'll see how many of these people we can primary with this absolutely weaponized information. And you'll get some stuff done if you go in there like that. That's what I would do. And, but again, we need Bernie to do it. He has to go in there and, and introduce the resolution to block it in the Senate. And the squad has to be willing to vote as a block. And they have to be willing to play hardball and say, listen, if you don't do the right thing when it comes to Israel-Palestine, you know, did you see those tens of thousands of protesters you drove by on your way to the F-150 factory in Dearborn, Michigan? 
People do care about this. They're not going to forget. If you want to be on the wrong side of it, be my guest. But I'm going to keep the spotlight on you if you are. And you've seen that this is an extremely polarizing issue where there are a lot of people that care a whole lot about the Palestinians. And those people are never going to vote for you in the next election if you're on the wrong side of it. But I'm going to make sure that they actively, actively go out there and make sure that other people don't vote for you because you are on the wrong side of Israel-Palestine. If you want to compete with that, be my guest. Give them the money. We'll see what happens. That's what I would do. So this is this is crazy. I applaud AOC, Mark Pocan, everybody that was a, a co-sponsor of the resolution in the House. But again, do I think that the uh, squad is actually going to push this? Do I even think Bernie's going to do the resolution? I don't think the squad is going to push it. Bernie might do the resolution, and that would be wonderful because then we would again get everybody on the record voting it down in the Senate or voting down the resolution, I mean, to block this, so allowing the $735 million to go to Netanyahu, and that's a hit list right there. That's everybody that votes incorrect on that gets fucked up in the primaries. So, um, But I don't think that they will play hardball enough, but I could be wrong. This is personal for Rashida Tlaib. Like I said, she would never have done this on something else. She didn't do it on Medicare for All. She didn't do anything brave. But she's doing something brave here because it affects her personally. Ilhan Omar, I imagine, is fired up on something like this. Maybe they will be angry enough over these war crimes and these images of dead children being pulled from piles of rubble to actually stand up. And if they can, they can ride the news cycle, they can get people on the record as voting for giving money to the genociders, and then you finally have some... Something that we could have had with the Medicare for All floor vote. We'll finally have some extremely weaponized information that we can use to cudgel these fuckers over the head when they go up for re-election. People will not forget, especially if we don't let them. Right, AOC? So let's work together. The squad needs to push this relentlessly, and I mean actually play hardball with this stuff. And Bernie has to do his part in the Senate. Maybe we can get something done. But I honestly, I don't have high hopes for that. Uh, I think the most we can expect is maybe Bernie will introduce the, the resolution. But I would just, I would give Joe the chance to go back on it and do the right thing right now and be like, listen, ultimatum time, do you want to be on the right side or the wrong side of this? Because we're drawing a line in the fucking sand and we're on the right side and time will show you for being how horrible you were. And it may show you in enough time that before 2024, this is one of those things that it really is going to hamper your chances of getting reelected there, Joe. And if you don't believe me, here's Andrew Yang's corpse. That seems enough proof for me. So keep fighting the good fight out there, guys. I'll talk to you later.